what's good youtube dm gaming here guys and we are going to go over how to run zone in college football 25 and if you already know then that's great you know probably don't have to watch this video but these are for the people who may be struggling learning how to run the ball efficiently now to me the run game is the easiest thing to do in the game but for some people, maybe not. So I am going to use Texas as you know, I'm a big Longhorn fan and we'll go into practice mode and we'll break down the running formations and or well, not the formations, but the scheme zone run scheme. So I do want to go to concept that makes it easier. I can go to run here and you have several different plays. So you have your buck, you have your inside zone, you have your jet inside zone. Uh, another inside zone these are all out of different formations texas playbook they run the spread they do a lot of rpos and in teams that you tend to see that do a lot of rpos they tend to run a lot of zone run concepts because zone runs are to me um they're good they're good run schemes to base our rpos off of because even in, in in rpos all the offensive linemen are doing are zone blocking you know you don't get a lot of pulling guards pulling tackles and things like that. So looking, I'm just looking at their plays because with the majority of them being zone, then yeah, you're going to see different formations here. So let's just run guns tight open. Let's run inside zone. Um, you have your inside zone here. You also have your power. You have your outside zone counter draw iso sweep and if you want to see some of these other running concepts let me know down in the comment section down below but for today we are going to cover inside and outside zone and first i'm going to start with inside zone so we'll just do a random play with l3 all right and then for the defense i'm just going to put them in a random defense okay they can literally come out in anything all right so the concept with inside zone now, a lot of mistakes that people or one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make as far as running the football is as soon as the running back get the ball, they want to get onto the sprint button <clears throat> and try to run and do things like that. And that, like I tell you, in a simulation game, you want to play it as close to simulation as possible. So with that being said, running backs are taught to be patient. You want a running back that's patient. You don't want them to just be all gas, no brakes. You know, be patient. Let your blocks develop. And when you see a hole, you hit it. So running inside zone here. All right. I'm going to do what everybody else do. I'm just getting on the sprint button and I'm just running. See, it's ineffective because you can't make any kind of cuts. You know what I'm saying? Be patient. Let your blocks develop. And then when you see the hole, sprint through the hole now every back is different they don't all have the same acceleration uh so you do want to be mindful of that okay but try to do as best as you can as as far as getting to the hole hitting the hole now inside zone works a little bit different than outside zone and we'll cover that here in a second let me switch controllers real quick and i'll be right back all right just had to switch controllers so i didn't want that one to die on me in the middle of recording so inside zone right here all right a lot of times what you may see with an inside inside zone run scheme you may end up getting a double team or something like that they're in a four-man front on this particular play you got the block coming around be patient let that guy block for you you do not need to beat him inside whenever you have that type of block okay cross block here to block on the back side by the tight end See how they double team, go up to the next level, and that opens up for you to be able to run through the ball. Okay. Hand off to running back here. I mean, hey, if they get in the backfield, they get in the backfield. But just be patient. Don't get on to the, the sprint button as fast as you can. But also in situations like that where you get penetration, this is why it's also important not to get onto the sprint button. Why? Because in this game you're able to make moves in the backfield almost as soon as you touch the ball you're not stuck in an animation if that makes sense see i'm able to cut back right there all because i'm not on the sprint button immediately after getting the ball or just you're not you're not trapped into an animation if that makes sense you see what i'm saying in the backfield right there how i was able to make that cut let's look at that one in instant replay 
to uh, show you what I'm what I'm speaking about, so we're on the same page. So generally in older games like Madden and stuff, this ball right here, I would not be able to make this move or it would be extremely difficult. As soon as he touches the ball, I'm able to stop and I'm able to cut, get upfield. I could have made another cut right there. I didn't see it. But you would be stuck in animation and he'd probably be tackled or he'd run into that guy. But be patient, okay? And that play will unfold for you. All right, because that block happened right here. See, I would have had a double team that goes to the next level, but he gets blocked into the backfield and it kind of throws off the play. Me personally, I'm not a big fan of inside zone. Uh, you tend to want to run that with a bigger back. Like if you have a speed back, inside zone, you, I, I, I like outside zone a little bit more. It allows him to use his speed. Right there, I try to get to the outside. Nothing doing. Go where the play is designed and if you need to bounce it, bounce it. Double team occurs right there. Get up to the next level. Follow my block. Get some big yardage right there. Isaiah Bond out there blocking his butt off. A little bit patient. Tip for tat. All right. And now let's go to outside zone. All right. So the key, like I said, in these zone plays is you want to um, you want to be patient. And to me, outside zone is even more prevalent about being patient, letting the hole develop. Because it's not to say that you're going to go through A gap or B gap or C gap. You know, you, you, A gap, you know, with a zone blocking scheme, A gap may shift down to where the B gap was at. Does that make sense? So it, it's not always going to be in the same place at the same time every single time. And we'll just go random play again here. Now we're hitting outside. Okay. And for this particular play, guys, look in the box. Okay. To the left of the center, I have two guys. So counting the center, I have three guys against one, two, three, four, five on that side. Whereas in the other side, counting the center, I have four against three. So we're going to flip this play. I'm not going to run it to that side. That is a, sh a weak side. Also, what could help check motion. If they're in man, they're naturally, you're going to clear a, a whole guy away. Now they shift. But guess what? Now I have an advantage. I have a three on three on the left side. OK, and then I have four on what four on the other side with some outside pressure. I know I'm running outside zone. So at this point in time, I can flip that play back if it lets me. I don't think it'll let me. Nope, it doesn't let me. So I can't flip that play back. Oh, well, we'll have to stick with this one here and just run it to the run it to this side right here. And I try to get outside right there. I had a hole right there. I just, you know, didn't hit that. But it was definitely there. Uh, instant replay here will kind of showcase that. That hole is right there. I could have followed right behind that guard. But I made the simple mistake that a lot of people make in trying to bounce it. Because, hey, look right there. It's there. You know, I seen that that guy was getting off of his block and kind of made that move early. But they didn't pick him up. And it's fine. It happens. We don't always get 100 yards rushing every game. Be a little bit patient right there. See how that opened up right there? That is a perfect example to me of how outside zone is ran. So I really want to take a look at that one, not just because I scored on it, but because this is the example that I was looking for. So for outside zone, it's different than inside zone. See, normally this play is designed technically to go kind of to this A gap, or kind of really behind the butt of this guard. I mean, the, tack, the, the guard, yeah, number 76 right there. But see, when I get the ball, now that hole shifts. A gap is occupied. You see the backer is flowing to A gap. So now the next gap over is going to be, um, it's not going to be the A gap. Now it's going to be the B gap. All right. This next gap. But see, that closes. So what do I do? I have to bounce that. One on one right here. I make a move. My back, I'm taking his number on that any and every time. And that's really what the backside B gap that came open. Be a little bit patient, find your lanes and go, man. You might be able to bounce it to the outside. You may be able to hit it up in there and get two, three, four or five yards. Don't always look to bounce it with the outside zone schemes. Man in motion right here. Let's bounce it out there. I got blockers. I can get out there. But see, if I if I just get on my sprint button and just haul butt out there, then they're going to tackle me. I'm, I'm not going to get many yards. Be patient right there. I can bounce that. Make a move on this guy right here. Get some yardage upfield. Outside zone is really good. I really like outside zone a little bit more than inside zone. Three-man front, guys. Zone is, I'm going to get big yards out of this every time. But see, on this play, now I can hit it up in there. You see what I'm saying? As opposed to just stemming that play to the outside, it really depends on what zone 
scheme you're running. Are you running inside zone? If you run inside zone, you tend to get a lot of double teams between the center and the guards, or it could be the guards and the tackles, but it's a lot of double teams going on. Outside zone is a little bit different. See how all the linemen zone block, okay? They zone block. You get the, the backside guard, 76, is going to double team on the nose with the center, okay? 54 and 8, they release. They all go to the next level. Outside zone right here, I could keep going outside, and I can get out there. But notice on, on number 64 or 54, right? 64, I think that's a 6. Yeah, on number 64 right here, this defensive end has outside leverage. So chances are, if I get there... I am not going to get there. He's going to be able to tackle me because he's got that outside shoulder free. Also, the defender that number eight is blocking also has outside leverage. But what I see here is my guard, who I should be looking at and following, double team block on the center between the center and the backside guard. On the play side guard, he's releasing to the next level. I'm going to follow his big butt in there because I'm banking on them getting that double team. Now, see, I have two ways to go. I can continue straight. And go through the right side of that guard. But notice that arm is free. And I'm understanding that this game allows you to have real good control over the players. So I cut right here. Right off of his butt for a big game. I go inside on an outside zone. Now they're stacking the box. Okay. So this play. You know. If I'm doing it before the snap. Pre-snap adjustment. I'm going to say wow. I'm probably going to have to hit this inside. Let's see. Hand off the ball. Yep. Try to cut it back. The center just gave up too much leverage right there, and he was able to get into the backfield. But the hole on that particular play definitely wasn't the outside. I was not getting outside on this particular play. The center blocks down. The play side guard is actually seems like he's pulling and kicking, but the penetration right there from the center, he gets in the backfield just a little bit, and it throws off the path of the ball carrier. That hole was definitely there to get off of his butt and get upfield, but backside pressure... He comes untouched, the backside end does, which you might say, well, why'd they let him go? Because the play is going to the right side. In a good scenario, the backside end shouldn't run this play down. I should be hitting that in there. But, oh, my gosh, the hole was definitely there. Handoff right here, outside leverage. Tried to, I tried to cut that in and then bounce it back out. Just didn't work right there. All right. Now, this is, you're not going to tend to get a defense line up in this formation. They're in prevent, which is crazy. All right. We're going to, we, we're gashing them every time with this. This is why I like a uh, zone on um, run plays or out of the, out of the uh, uh, beer and shoot offense. Hand off right there. Be patient. Let that hole develop and bust up in there, man. I should have bounced that out to the outside right there, but. Just trying to give y'all a look. Outside zone to me is more effective with a more agile lineman um, and a back that has really good ball carrier vision and a good change of direction. If you have a good change of direction back, zone is going to be really good for you because he's able to get into the holes as quick as possible. Same play right here, man, going in motion or bringing a blitz. Try to make a move in the backfield. He comes untouched. Nothing you can do and just try to get back to the line of scrimmage. Same thing right here. See, follow that double team. It doesn't always have to hit wide. Get up in there. Get up in to those trenches. So looking at that one, that's one that, once again, it hits it, the outside zone play that hits really pretty much that A-gap. See how that A-gap is extended? I could have stayed and went on to the backside of number 64, the outside uh, shoulder of that tackle. But look who's out there. Look right here at the cornerback or the, in the outside. He's He's got inside leverage. He's clean, okay? So don't try to stretch everything. Turn it up. Get as many yards as you can get. That's the key. Just because it says outside zone doesn't mean you have to run sideline to sideline. This is what happens when I try to run sideline to sideline. I mean, yeah, I, I beat a guy right there. Yeah, but realistically guys that's not gonna happen a whole lot in the game same thing right here just block follow my blocks get out there if it's there it's there i follow your double teams okay because this game is pretty smart these linemen will sit there and double team and they'll bounce off of the double team and go to the next level if there is a threat at the next level okay this one i can bounce at i got a little bit of speed i can get out there on the edge okay playing this just a little bit faster to my seat right here Goes in motion, blocks upfield, see the double team, cut it up. 
All right, so I hope this video has been helpful to somebody. Hey, you know, I know a lot of y'all watching, you know, probably already know how to run zone schemes and things like that. But just understand, follow your blocks and be patient. Let the play develop. You want to have a sense of urgency, but you want to be patient at the same time. But hopefully, like I said, this helps somebody who didn't or isn't familiar with zone and base and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, maybe it's going to make their run game just a little bit better. Guys, that's all I got for right now, y'all. Till next time, thanks for watching. Peace.